Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today we're making a Christmas wreath using a Graphic 45 matchbook box. Here's the project that we're making today. This book wreath was not my idea. I will put a link to the lady's video that I saw years ago on YouTube, and she made one of these wreaths right here. This is the one that I made last year for Christmas, and I love how it turned out. So I wanted to incorporate it in a different type of project this year and make it for like a coffee table or um, maybe on a, a mantle over your fireplace. So I'm using the 12 by 12 Graphic 45 Matchbook box, like I said, and you've probably seen me use them in eight by eight and three and a half by five. These are super fun to work with. They have two pieces to them and they just slide out just like a, a matchbook does. So I'm going to separate them and use the bottom portion, the shadow box portion. The top of it I can save and use for something else. I'm using some red acrylic paint and adding that to the entire box. I wasn't sure if the wreath would show through in the middle or not, so I, I went ahead and painted the entire box and I did give it three coats to make sure that it, it um, looked nice and it, it looked great after three coats. I did use my heat gun in between each coat to help dry it a little bit faster so I didn't have to wait. I made the wreath using her instructions last year and I made it, I think it was just a couple days before Christmas, so I kept it up all year long. It's it's above my fireplace and it looks so pretty. I wanted to enjoy it because like I said, I, I made it just a couple days before Christmas. And when I bought the book, I just bought it because it was 50 cents. I didn't even pay attention to what the book was. And everybody that comes over and sees it, first of all, they love it because it's such a, a large piece, but they always ask what the book was. So if you're gonna make one of these, maybe you should use a book that's um, meaningful to you that's up to you. But again, this book I just got for 50 cents at the thrift store and I'm just ripping out several pages at once. And you wanna use your scissors or your paper trimmer and just give it a clean edge. I cut off probably about three quarters of an inch. And now I'm going to shape them into cones. I'm grabbing the top right hand corner, wrapping it around, and then wrapping the bottom around that and adding some scotch tape to it. The scotch tape will just hold it in place because we'll, we will be stapling it a little bit later. So again, super easy, just grabbing the top right, rolling it around, and then wrapping the bottom portion around that. So I made quite a few of these. I, I didn't count how many. But for the book wreath, um, the large wreath, I think I did like two, 250 of them and I used every single one. So being that we're using this in a box, it's not gonna be a perfect circle. It's not gonna come out like a perfect wreath, but it looks, I think it just turned out so pretty. So I'm just kind of finding the center of my box and I will use that as a little bit of a guide just to get started. And here I'm showing you that you want to staple about one inch up from the bottom. And if you were making her wreath, you would leave them like that and use them like that. But being that I'm adding them into a box, I'm going to have to cut them down to size. Throughout the entire project, you'll see me stapling and cutting them to the size that I need. So here, I will zoom out in just a minute so you can get a little bit better view, but I'm just measuring it from the center point to the four corners. And I'm starting with my four corners, cutting them down after I, I kind of just eyeball where what size I need. So here's a better view of it. Um, I realized at that point I was zoomed in, so I, I'm just taking them out to show you how I did it. So I'm just measuring from the corner right into that center point, approximately right to the center point, and adding those first. And then from there, I will simply fill the entire box. I want it as full as possible. 
So again, I'm just kind of setting them where I need them, where I want them to go, and then once I see the size, I'm going to staple them and cut them down. And then using hot glue, I'll just go around and fill them all in. This is actually a really quick project to do. As I'm filling them in, you'll even see me tuck some in the bottom if it looks like it needs them. Again, just trying to make this as full as possible. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's raining pretty hard right outside my window, so I hope it's not too much of a distraction. So once I'm happy with the fullness of it, I just keep lifting it up and checking it. Then I'm going to add something to the center and I wanted to add a touch of gold. So I'm using these tiny ornaments that I got from Michaels. I've seen them at Walmart or any of your other craft stores. I love the gold with the red and those book pages. So I wanted to add those in. And now from here, if you wanted to hang this on a wall, you could punch some holes in the top using a, a big bite or a crop -a dial if you have one and add some ribbon through and it would look beautiful hanging on a wall. What I chose to do is I wanted it on a stand um, to sit either on like a, a fireplace mantle or an end table. So I'm using a candlestick holder that I got from the dollar store and I just went ahead and marked the center of the box, the bottom of the box, so I had a little bit of an idea of where to place it, and I used some E6000 and let it sit overnight, and it was adhered by the morning. It was completely dry. So there will be some detailed photos coming up. I hope you've enjoyed this project, and I hope you stop by Cut It Home's blog. There's lots of details and inspiration on the blog. Thanks so much for watching. <music>